everybody, it's Jason Shadrick with Premier Guitar, and we're back in Anaheim at the Winter Nam Show. I'm here with our old buddy Fred from Martin Guitars. Hello, everybody. And we're going to talk about a few different things today, but the first series we're going to talk about is this new Inception Maple series, Inception. and you're playing, uh, playing one of them. The other ones we have hanging on the wall here behind right. us. Right. So tell us a little bit, Fred, about the background on this guitar and kind of what makes it unique. Sure. Uh, we really wanted to try to to use some domestic hardwoods and try to do something a little bit different with the guitars. Uh, we, we know we're not going to have rosewood and mahogany forever, right? It's going to get more expensive, it's going to get more difficult to obtain. The price points are only going to go up as that wood gets more expensive. So we know the future is going to be woods that grow a little quicker, domestic North American woods. So we want to get our foot into that uh, a little deeper. Now we've made maple guitars before, everybody's made maple guitars, right? And maple has its own sort of unique voice, it's really different. It's kind of dry, it's a quick fundamental note, kind of compressed sound. And generally people will overcome that by just making jumbos, right? You can get a little more dynamic range if you use maple in a jumbo size. But we knew we wanted to make something in a smaller size, cutaway, a little more singer-songwriter instrument. So we went ahead and we made a maple guitar, prototyped it, used a typical Martin uh, formula recipe for that. And it was okay, it was fine but we felt like there was just something more going on, something more we could do with the instrument. So like anything else, I, I use this analogy, when you change a key ingredient in your recipe, you're probably gonna have to adjust the recipe a little bit. Yeah. And that was sort of our thinking with this particular guitar. So we started by changing what essentially is the dynamic engine of the guitar, which is the top. We really wanted to move the bracing around. We felt like if we could get the top to be a little more responsive than normal, that we could get a little bit more out of the maple than we wanted. So the way we started that was we did some weight relief on the braces on the inside. Uh, I can show you a sample. Yeah, yeah let's see one, yep. So this is a sample of the top. As you can see, we've done like a, hexa um, a hexagon honeycomb shape here. And in between those, you can see little X's that we've yeah. done using lasers in the factory. Um, that, that way we can get this top to sort of move a little bit more. It makes perfect sense. If I can make the brace a little bit lighter, it takes less energy to move it. And it will vibrate longer because it doesn't weigh as much. Right, right. So we've taken some weight out of it. And then we decided we were gonna add these tone channels around every piece of the bracing. Once again, to allow this top to sort of move. That is the engine of the instrument. You wanna see it move. Generally right behind the bridge is where the, it, the top is gonna go. And it's like a speaker, like in a speaker cabinet. So this really allows the whole top to sort of move. It's unique, it's something different we haven't done before. Uh, the braces are just typical Martin braces. They're, some people have you know, gone online and said, oh, they're bigger, they're taller, they're whatever. That's not true. They're just a normal size brace that we've done the weight relief on the inside. So that is sort of what's happening on the inside of the guitar. All right, so we've done some other things to the instrument also. We've got a walnut uh, bridge, walnut fingerboard, walnut binding. We tried to avoid plastic wherever we could on the instrument. Once again, kind of sticking with our, our environmental move on this particular instrument. Uh, let's said the walnut neck. And then we decided we wanted to add a wedge to the back. And we put a walnut wedge in the back because we felt like the tone needed something just to sort of sweeten it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But the maple was still just a little harsher than we wanted it to be. The walnut kind of is sort of a split between rosewood and mahogany in the way it sounds. You get some of the base of the rosewood and you get a little bit treble from the mahogany, so it, it kind of helps on the center. Now, we, we thought we were going to go with like a traditional 35 style straight back brace, you know, uh, wedge, but we, we wanted to experiment with this one a little bit differently. So you notice that the wedge has like a little bulge, yeah. right? It kind of comes out. The widest point of the wedge in this particular case falls directly underneath the bridge. We're trying to pick up a little bit more of that walnut sound in there, like I said, to kind of give the instrument a little more complexity as we play it. So it has its own sound, it's very unique. I think you should compare it to other maple guitars that are you know, smaller body cutaways like this. Yep. I mean, don't compare it to a, a jumbo or something like that, it's not what it is. Um, but I think you'll find it's um, a really fun guitar to play. It's a different approach. I think you're gonna see more of this from Martin going forward where yeah. we're gonna start playing with the recipe of what we do when we're starting to use non-traditional woods and body shapes mm -hmm. uh, to try to get something out of it and try to push the industry a little bit forward. Give guitar players a new tonal palette to play with, right? Something kind of cool. And what kind of electronics do you have in it? Uh, the LR bags, Anthem. They're available now. 
Yes. And what will be the price on them? Thirty nine ninety nine. Yep. Excellent. Well, now we're going to shift gears and kind of take a quick overview of the new X series you guys are bringing to the show. Great. All right, now we're here with Mike, and we are going to look through, look at a couple of the new X-Series models we have here. So tell us about these two you brought over. Yeah, so exciting stuff uh, this year at NAMM 2024 here at the Martin booth. Uh, we have the X-Series remastered, 35 years of manufacturing excellence out of Navajo, Mexico. What we've done is we really flipped it upside down. We had a great lineup with the X-Series, but what we did for this is aesthetically, playability and tonality. It's really where durability meets sophistication. So I'll just run you through what we've done. So we've taken a lot, a lot of high res scans from our wood library for Cocobola, which I believe you're holding, uh, Zircote and Brazilian Rosewood. And what we did is we've gone through hundreds of sets of wood from our wood library we did a high resolution scan, and that's what you see on the back and side. We also have a matching head plate. We, we rounded it out with a nice abalone finesse pearl rosette, mm -hmm. uh, satin tuning machines. Playability standpoint, we put a modern sloped bridge on it, which is an SC style bridge. We thinned out the fingerboard for playability, um, and we have a Martin E1 electronic with a chromatic tuner. So there's 12 SKUs, various body shapes, everything from a cutaway, triple O, to a 12-string model. And w will these be available soon, available now? Available now, shipping now. Right. And yep. what will be the price range on these models? Uh, they're going to range from $699 to $749. All right, where can people go online to find out more information about the X-Series and everything else y'all are doing at Martin? You go to, to the Martin website. All right, we're going to have you play us out. This is Jason Shadrick with Premier Guitar.